let's look at some of the new features coming in Craft 5.3. I'm gonna go over some of my favorites for the things that I think will be most helpful, starting with the link field. The link field is a replacement for the URL field type that we had in prior versions of Craft, and it allows you to have multiple different link types, things you can link to, URLs, assets, categories, emails, entries, or a phone number. So for a URL, you just put in the URL out here like that. Of course, if you wanted to link to an asset, then you would choose the asset. Or similarly, if you wanted to link to a category or a entry, it just turns into a relationship field. Now, when you link to a asset or an entry or a category, you are able to then access that entire element object and all of the data along with it. And we'll look at that in just a moment. So if I go back to the URL, you can see that it's populated the one I had there previously. We save that. Looking at the code, the name of my field is called linked resource. So I'm accessing it here in my single entry template. And when I do that, it'll just output the URL that I inputted. If I want to output the label, then I can do it like this with dot label. And what happens here is that the link field tries to be smart and come up with a label based on the domain name. So I'll save that, go over to our front end. You can see this is what it looks like here, is that it just used the domain to try to create a label automatically. And if you don't have a label, that's what the link field will do. However, you can also just create a field like I have here called a link label and make the label anything you want. You don't get that by default with the link field. You do have to create your own custom field to do that. In this case, it's just a plain text field. And then we can change our code by coming over here and just outputting entry dot link label to get the label. And now if we reload, you can see that our link now uses that label from this link label field. So we can combine a custom plain text field and our link field to create something like this. And in this case, this is for a call to action module inside of this test site. We can also just use entry dot linked resource dot link. So just call dot link on that link field and see what that outputs. That will just get us the link itself. Let's look at this code here. If we wanted to check whether the link label is populated, and if it is, we can just output the link resource and the link label. And if it's not, we can just output just the link. So there are some options there for checking as well. But let's go ahead and look at what the innards of our link field output. We'll do dump entry dot linked resource. That's the link label field. And this is what it looks like. What we are looking after is our value. And if you call dot type, you'll get the actual link type itself. So I do entry dot linked resource dot type. It's going to tell me the type of link. And this will be handy if you wanted to match this to an icon for a URL or a phone number. So reload and this will output that it's the link type URL. If I go in here, change this to phone and input a phone number. Then that's going to output telephone or tell for that link type. Similarly, if I go in and add this as an entry and we'll just link to, let's see the locations page, save that. And this will now say entry as the type. So we can determine what type it is and maybe change our presentation accordingly. All right, back in our code, let's go ahead and look at here. We are dumping the entry dot linked resource dot element. So right now we have this linked to a entry. Let's see what that outputs for us. Look at this, we get the entire entry object with all of the data that we would need, including the title, ID, slug, anything that we need to output that we can. It's essentially turning into a relationship field and it's related to that element. So if I go in here, 
And instead of dumping out, if I say entry dot linked resource dot element dot title and reload, you can see it gives me the title of that element. If I say element dot slug, then I get the slug. So I have access to everything that is part of that related element. So that is how the linked field works. It's a really handy field and should definitely be part of the core craft CMS. Now let's look at the multi-instance relationship fields in 5.3. And this has really changed things up here because now instead of just being limited to one instance of a relationship field like this one, this is a assets field type in versions of craft five prior to 5.3, we couldn't have multiple instances of this field. And now we can, you can see it automatically is going to increment the field handle name for me. So I don't have to worry about any collisions there, but now I can have multiple instances of a assets field. Another thing we can do in 5.3 is move entries between sections, but only if those sections have shared entry types. So check it out. I have a city section and a location section, and I can choose these three entries and go to the gear menu and say move to. It's only going to show me the sections that have the same entry type. So this is the only valid section to move to. Click move and my entries have been moved into the locations section. So this is great if you need to move content around or you spin up a new section and you want to just move a handful of entries over, you can now do it as long as they share an entry type. In Craft 5.3, we can also merge fields and entry types. And this is going to be really helpful for people coming from previous versions of Craft where they have a bunch of matrix fields. And as part of the entrification process, all of those matrix fields are going to be converted over into entry types. And then the blocks are going to be converted over into entries. And this is going to help clean up those fields and entry types. So this is something that's been uh, well expected leading up to 5.3. Let's go ahead and see how it works. I'm running a DDEV project here. So if I do DDEV craft, we should be able to see the new commands that are available to us. The first one is for the fields. Let me find that really quick. There we go. We got fields merge and fields auto merge. And the auto merge is going to find fields that basically have the same settings and merge them together. You're going to trust craft to know what those are, or you can do it manually via fields merge. The other one is for the entry types, entry types merge, and it's going to guide you through a wizard for doing that. So we'll do DDEV craft fields. We'll just do the manual merge. And then you want to pass in the fields that you want to merge. So in my case, I have a field called simple plain text and plain text. I want to merge everything into plain text. So we do DDEV craft fields merge, simple plain text and plain text. And it's going to ask us which field should persist. Well, it looks like I don't have any usages of simple plain text. So we'll say plain text and our default is in square brackets. So we can just hit enter. And then our fields have been merged. And you can see what it has done here is that it's gone ahead and updated the usages, removing the simple plain text. It creates a content migration and then runs that content migration. But you still have more work to do because you are going to have some project config changes and you're going to have to run craft up in other environments for the changes to take effect. And you wanna make sure that you commit those migrations so that they are able to run on other environments. That's one thing to know about merging other fields or entry types. So entry type merging is the same thing. We're gonna do craft entry types merge. And in our case, let's find our two entry types to merge. It's going to be call to action and CTAs are our two entry types that we want to merge. And you can see that our CTAs field doesn't have any usages. It's going to prompt us to use call to action. 
we can either type it out or use the default with just return. And they are merged along with a merge uh, migration, which we need to commit and make sure we run craft up in all of our environments. And of course, our field is now gone. We just have plain text field. And in our entry types, we just have the call to action entry type. The other one is gone as well. That's a very simple example. And those of you that have built complex sites based on content builders using matrix may have more of a time in finding out which fields or entry types that you want to merge, which one you want to keep. So plan accordingly, plan carefully, and make sure you work within a branch so you can isolate that type of work. So we also have some new user enhancements. When we create a new user, we get the create and set permissions button. So when we create a new user like this, we can do create set permissions. It's going to ask me for my password as the admin, and then I can set permissions for this. Now we also get the save and send activation email button here so that we can automatically send the activation email to the user, and then we can save or save and continue editing. So for the site admins that are creating a lot of new users, this will most likely save you some time because there's more of a linear flow with the buttons to accomplishing what you need to do. Let's look at some other things. Uh, entry types are no longer required to have unique names. And the entry type selects inside of, let's say our section settings now have the handle listed as well so that there is uh, no chance for confusion since the names don't need to be unique. And you can see the names and the handles are listed here as well. Back to the entry types listing page, you can see the entry types are now listed as chips in place of just our plain text labels. And you can see the color and the icon is all listed here. So it's more easily deciphered between the different entry types. One other nice addition for fields is that in Craft 5, we got the icons field type. And with that, we get a suite of icons that are available via Font Awesome Pro. Now, not everybody has a Font Awesome Pro license. So if you toggle this on, all of the icons will show even pro icons. If you leave it off, then only the non-pro icons will show. So this is important. That way you don't accidentally select an icon that isn't available on the front end. So these are some of the most important features in 5.3, especially if you are migrating projects from Craft 4 over to Craft 5. I think that's going to be much easier now and hopefully it'll unlock the ability to do that for a lot more projects. Thanks a lot for watching. See you on the next video.